So it has officially been one month since I started basically creating, instead of a to-do list, I'm creating just game achievements for my business. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you three things that I learned about myself in planning like this and three things that I really loved about planning like this. So the first thing that I learned about myself is I still need to set reasonable expectations. So even though I felt like I toned down what I was expecting out of myself a lot for January, I didn't do it enough. Especially when it came to the creative side of everything, like creating the SVGs, creating the clip art, creating the sublimation, I still put way too much pressure on myself. As a designer, I know that in order to grow, I need to just be better at what I'm doing. And I also need to set myself apart from everyone else so that customers are drawn to me and what I'm doing. And learning new things and new techniques and going a little bit different with the things that I'm doing, all of that stuff requires time. And there was no way that I was going to be able to still dedicate the time to doing those things and still produce as much as what I thought I was going to. And the expectations for myself, you know, they really just need to tone it down a notch because I wanna start streaming again. I wanna create just because I like crafting and I also wanna draw more. Like I wanna get back to the things that personally just make me happy. And then I also have kids and like a house to maintain and everything else. So more realistic expectations is something that I desperately need to grasp. So moving forward into February, I'm renegotiating with myself on the things that I think that I can handle in a month. If I find myself being able to accomplish these goals with like little to no resistance, then I'll reevaluate again and add just a little bit more to my plate. But I need to make sure that I'm going from one to two and not like zero to 60, which seems to be the direction that I normally had. So just maintaining realistic expectations. The next thing that I learned about myself, and it kind of goes into the realistic expectations, is I try to do too much. I like so many things and I want to do so many things and I want to try so many things that I struggle with knowing that some things just simply are not for me. As I was going over the list of the stuff that I had set out for myself, like, hey, you're going to do these. I for sure realized that there were certain tasks that I just naturally gravitated towards. So things definitely sparked joy for me and others did not. So with me putting out a list of 20 major categories, not all of them was getting achieved. So in order to kind of like combat that, I'm actually gonna be moving some things completely off of my list. In my head, creating SVGs, creating sublimation designs, creating stickers, creating fonts, creating a lot of things. Like all of this stuff was so totally, like this is realistic. You can totally do all of this, Ashley, no problem at all. It became a huge problem. And not that I got really down on myself and like, was like, wow, Ashley, you're so, what the heck? It wasn't like that. It was more of a, oh my gosh, there's still so much left on this list that you haven't even touched yet. So seeing it like that was a little overwhelming, but I didn't feel bad about it, which is a huge plus. Cause normally I feel really terrible about not getting things done. I didn't feel bad this month. So that was great. So there are certain things that I'm just gonna completely remove off of my like, no, you can do this, Ashley, like creating fonts. I did open up the font app a few times, but I just couldn't sit down long enough to commit to doing the thing. And it's not that I wasn't, it's not that I didn't want to, cause I did, I did want to create that. There was just no motivation after getting like five of the letters done. It was like, I hate it. I hate all of this. I'm just not gonna do this. And then I would open it back up and it's like, I still hate this. And it was just a repeating pattern like that. So it's like, okay, let's just take fonts off completely. We're just not even gonna worry about that. If there comes a time where I'm compelled to make something because I finally figured out how I want it to look, then I'll come back to that and it'll just be like a bonus. But as far as putting it into 
my achievement system as like, no, you've got to get this. You have to win this award. That's just not going to happen. I'm also removing principles because while I like while I liked creating the ones that I did, it's not something that I woke up in the morning and was like, oh, let's create some printables today. That was never on my mind. When I looked at the list of things that I wanted to get done, it wasn't, I was not drawn to that, not once. So just removing that so that I don't have that thing just staring at me like, wow, you have not done this today. I'm just taking that off so that there is no feeling bad about not doing the thing. So the third thing that I learned about planning like this is I need to get a little more specific with certain goals. So being a creative being and wanting to be able to give myself the freedom enough to move when inspiration hits me and float wherever I want, I didn't give myself any restraints. So I did have it set up to where there were certain numbers that I needed to hit, like record X amount of videos, create X amount of SVGs, upload X amount here, the numbers alone definitely helped this month, but not knowing where to start with some of these things was a little unnerving. Like I fell to that whole analysis paralysis thing. I wasn't sure where to start. So moving forward, I'm going to have a list of like SVG designs that I could pull from or a list of videos that I could pull from. So when I am motivated to do, let's knock out 10 SVGs today. Okay, what, what 10? I can just pull from that list. Even if I have to pop it into like a random number generator thing, I'm just gonna pull from the list that I already have set up so that I can just knock out that 10. So one thing that I really loved about this method of planning was that it gave me the freedom that I really needed to not feel like crap for not finishing all of the things I'm to do. Yes, it's still a list of things that I want to do, but they are achievements. They are unlocking levels instead of, these are hard tasks with hard deadlines. If you don't finish it, what, what are you even doing with your life? I didn't feel that level of pressure, which was great for me. Another thing that I really liked about this whole achievement thing was that I found myself striving to get to that next spot a lot more than I normally did. One of my goals was uploading to Cricut Design Space and I found it was a lot easier once I got started and I was at like 30 out of 50 uploads for the month. I'm like, oh my gosh, I am so close to doing this. So I found it was easier to fully commit to that last leg of the race because I could physically see how close I was to unlocking that achievement. Like, oh my gosh, there's only 10 SVGs left. I can actually do this one today. So like, it was really nice to have that extra push when I was really close to doing something or finishing a goal. And the biggest thing that I really liked about all of this is that it showed me that I'm actually getting a lot more done in a month than I thought that I was. So I normally would have like a long list of like 50 things that I would need to get done. And when those things didn't get done and they got drug over to the next day and then the next day and then the next day, I felt terrible. Like, why can't you just do these things? And it was always hard to know which task to start on first, where to start, because everything seemed like it like intertwined with each other. Nothing stood out as a more important task. So looking at my goals this month as game achievements was a fun take on planning. The pressure of getting it done was no longer there. It was just, if I do this, I'm going to get I'm going to unlock this. Like if, if I can get five more done, I'm going to unlock this achievement. I get to wear this badge. And when I was able to like level up to like the third stage of things or when I unlocked all of the achievements for that particular task, it was like, ooh, I am feeling myself today. Like, look at this. I've So setting it up like this made it to where I felt better about the amount of things that I was getting done because I killed it in some categories. Like I really did great. And just seeing it like that 
it's kind of like a mind shift change which i think was really great if you're interested in knowing what i'm talking about be sure to check out this video here and if you want to see more videos like this let me know in the comments down below